election results. We're glad you're with us tonight at 6. The drawn out battle over Michigan's election results topping our news. As we await word on what's being uh, been discussed at that White House meeting, John James is making a move of his own. The Senate candidate, defeated by Gary Peters, is requesting a full audit of Michigan's election results by the State Board of Canvassers. James wants the board to take an additional two weeks to perform that audit. The Board of Canvassers is set to meet Monday in Lansing to vote on whether to certify the Michigan vote. Meanwhile, state GOP leaders are part of one of the most controversial White House meetings in recent memory. Leader Mike Shirky and Speaker Lee Chatfield jetted off to Washington, D.C. this morning. It's been concern among some that the president would try to get them to overturn Michigan's election results, taking its electoral votes away from President-elect Biden. With a look at where things stand tonight, we bring in our Rod Maloney. Uh, unusual day, Rod. Yeah, to say the least, Devin, I mean, the meeting started at 4 o'clock, at least that's what we've been told was to happen to start at 4 o'clock. And so we've not had anything out of the White House yet, although certainly we're monitoring that situation. In the meantime, the Democrats are lining up very angry about this meeting. Before the sun came up, Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky strolled into Detroit Metro Airport for his flight to Washington, D.C. Meeting him there were Democratic protest groups like We the People, who shot this video and posted it on Facebook. A couple of hours later, the leader arrived in Washington, D.C. and once again was greeted by many protesting his visit. Shirky sings in his church and is partial to spirituals and has sung inside the Senate chambers in the past. And he did so this morning instead of answering many questions hurled his way. About 1 p.m., Michigan House Speaker Lee Chatfield posted this tweet about the meeting, quote, no matter the party, when you have an opportunity to meet with the president of the United States, of course, you take it. I won't apologize for that. In fact, I'm honored to speak with POTUS and proud to meet with him, and I look forward to our conversation, end quote. This is certainly not going over well with Michigan Congresswoman Debbie Dingell. What we are witnessing before our eyes is an undermining of people's confidence in their democracy. He is attacking the integrity of our elections and unfortunately shaking the very foundations of the pillars of our democracy. And that is unacceptable and must be challenged. And we reached out to meet the press moderator Chuck Todd for his thoughts on today's meeting. I do think we all need to take a step back. And while we, a lot of us realize what the president is attempting to do is impossible, it's not going to overturn the election. Joe Biden's going to get inaugurated and sworn in on January 20th. But that doesn't mean these attempts don't sow more seeds of doubt, don't create headlines that make more of the president's supporters believe this nonsense, that somehow there wasn't a free and fair election. And it does make it that much harder, I think, to um, govern, frankly, going forward. And so we wait to find out if, in fact, there's going to be any kind of a statement coming out of this meeting. Certainly, we'll follow that and have something updated come 11 o'clock. Reporting live, Rod Maloney. Well, of course you will. All right, Rod. Well, the two Republican members of the Wayne County Canvassing Board are speaking out after attempting to decertify that county's results. Monica Palmer and William Hartman say a phone call from President Trump did not influence their decision to try to rescind their vote. They simply wanted to make sure there wasn't a repeat from the August primary. It appeared that 70 percent of the Detroit absentee counting boards were out of balance unexplained. We have a repeat of the primary. We really thought that it was going to be a lot better but we're really surprised when nothing really changed. Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson says there's no legal mechanism for Palmer and Hartman to rescind their votes. Uh, as we turn